Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Shirtless Plantain Show, the Euros edition. This is your host, Dean, and as always, but not always, but sometimes, I'm here with my friends and my co-hosts. We start with Coach. How you been, Coach? I'm back after serving up meats to the fam. Even though I wasn't, even though I wasn't on the grill, like, I feel like I did my part. I heard you guys talking shit. Let me tell you something like that. You guys cannot out-meet me. <laughs> if you want to go meet, if you want to go meet for meat, we can go meet for meat, bro. Uh, those of you, those of you like two people that have me on on Instagram, you guys would have seen this shit, right? I'm a real, I'm a real, I'm a meteor, bro. I will literally, I will, I will destroy your world, bro. So that's what I've got to say on that. And uh, Tosin, you're also here. And uh, remember, it's not Pride Month for everybody. Yeah, it's not. It's not, but you know, at the end of the day, I, I don't know what to say to that. I don't know how we start off talking about meat, um, but I did end the podcast yesterday talking about locks and hair and braids. So, you know, it, it, it is what it is. June is almost over. <laughs> it is what it is, my brother. Like if people, if people only wanted football from us, they'd go listen to the athletic or some shit. They're here for meats mm. and hairstyles, you know, and that's okay. But we move back to the football. It's day nine of the Euros. Mm. We're down to two games per day which is so sad and not only is it two games per day fellas it's two games at the same time so we can't even like truly watch them both you know but thankfully we took some time before we started this to catch up on the other game which game did you watch on your big tv tosin germany <laughs> coach what do you think <laughs> <laughs> I'm just trying to be respectful of the Scotsmen. They've been very good fans at the Euros. <laughs> and based on today's result, they'll be going home because they lost 1-0 to Hungary. Um, we're starting with them because I'm, we all watched the Germany game on the big TV, so we have more to say about that. But Hungary-Scotland wasn't a bad game if you were paying attention from your side yeah. eye or with your peripherals and whatnot. Um, Tosin, what did you see of this game? Scotland need more immigrants. We need to get <laughs> Oluwa Haggis in there. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god! Because Scotland looks like exactly what France and England would look like without no blacks. Okay, they need more Nigerians, they need more Ghanaians, need more Jamaicans. Um, I they don't need, know. They man. need they need more francophone countries for sure. That, yeah, that's that. I feel like that's a that's a formula for every for every European nation at this point. Like West Africans and yes. francophones, and you're and you're good. <laughs> I just feel like the yeah, problem because... is that before any black people make it up to Scotland. They would mm. just stop in England because someone would just it's, it's, it just gets colder facts. as you go further north. So they just, they just stop and like you don't even see niggas in I'll Newcastle. Tell, I, I'll, t <laughs> I'll tell you this. I'll tell you this. The only reason why we didn't stay in England, we my mom had a job offer in Manchester, and my dad said, "I do not want my kids talking like that. Let's go to America." So imagine me <laughs> speaking with a Scottish accent. <laughs> you know, a funny a funny story about Newcastle. The first time I ever went up there. I was absolutely gobsmacked that the next stop after Newcastle was Scotland. I couldn't believe how far from home I was, yet I was still in the same country. I was like, what the... They were telling me next, next stop, Glasgow. Like, Glasgow? I was like, Glasgow's in S Scotland? <laughs> <laughs> Listen, yeah, it makes sense. It absolutely makes sense that you, that, you know, the Francophones and West Africans aren't, aren't going to Scotland, no, man. No. Like, they, just, they just aren't. We, we're not doing that shit. Um, so listen, the funniest thing about what Coach just said is that, you know, the distance between London and Scotland is not even as far as Houston to Dallas. <laughs> and this nigga's like, no, I'm so it's far not. from home. I'm so far from home. Like, bro, like, like, like the suburbs of Houston are further away than fucking Glasgow to London. I'll tell you, my brother. Should we do some Googles? Because listen, I'm a t he, he was talking about his meat, right? In America, <laughs> our meat is so big. <laughs> That if you drove from Dallas to Texas, I mean, if you drove from like Austin, Texas to Philly, you spend more time in Texas than you do any other state. That's how big our meat is in America. Freedom, baby. Yeah. That's why I wore this jersey to show y'all about our meat. Listeners, I have to apologize for all of this. We will now talk about the football. Um, coach, I didn't expect this from Hungary, but they had what I considered a very physical approach in that first half. I think they got like three or four yellow cards. Yeah. So. I think they realised that Scotland, Scot Scotland's plan B was essentially, if shit doesn't go well for us, we're just going to make this a scrap. And if you can beat Scotland in a scrap, you'll, beat, you'll just beat them. You'll eventually just beat them. 
And I feel like they just said, okay, we make this into a fight, see what they've got. If they haven't got anything else, we'll pick, we'll take our chance when it comes, basically. Simple as that was the that was I feel like that was the mandate. And yeah, like Scotland were kind of hoping it I think Scotland were kind of hoping it was gonna be more of a football game. And <laughs> they, they were shocked. So yeah. yeah. I mean, my thing is right, if you look at hungry striker that came off the bench, right? Yeah. That's what they're about. Then they got Dominic Shoba Sly, who might as well be light skinned, but that striker they bring off the bench, the big fella, that's what yeah. they're really about right there. Big, yeah. big, big man. He he don't like that. He don't like y'all calling him the big fella like that. Y- y'all heard his feelings. He was in a press conference, like holding back the tears, yeah. like, I can't help who I am. I'm just a big nigga, you know, like I got big beats. So <clears throat> my bad, my bad. That's coach's fault. Who said that? Anyway, <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, I wanted to ask you guys though, like this. This tournament feels like it's been more physical, actually, just in general. Mm. It feels like there's been a mandate from up, from on high for refs to just kind of let the game flow. Are you guys sensing that, or am I making this up? I love it. It makes me feel like I'm watching a fancy Copa America. <laughs> it's like I'm watching Copa America with a, with a champagne flute. That's what I'm watching, because... <laughs> you are sassy. Oh, my God. <laughs> This boy is zesty. Like, like, listen, man, the weather went up in New York and this nigga got zesty as fuck. It's crazy, man. You know, like, it's crazy. Like, that yeah. pain flu. Oh, it's, 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 it's pinkies out. I'm like, serious. They were, listen, they were, they, were, they were there following each other. I mean, I've, I've watched all the Copa America games, yeah. right? And they're basically doing 1999 WWF on each other in that, in that tournament. Yeah. In this tournament, they're over here just doing WWE, which is a little yeah. bit more... You know, it's the same thing, but it's a little bit more nicer than for the eyes. But it's a bit more PC, you know. It's yeah, work. it's work wrestling. Yeah, that's <laughs> what it is. Oh my uh, god, WWE work wrestling entertainment. My god, enough of that crap. Real eyes <laughs> recognize real lies. <laughs> All right, on we go. Uh, the big talking point from this game wasn't actually football itself; it was the injury to mm-hmm. Barnabas Varga. We found out later on that he was okay, but it looked like it was basically a. So with the free kick into the box, three people collided, and he was he was one that didn't get up. Uh, it looks scary. Yeah. I didn't actually see it. Um, you know, I'm just I'm just going off description. But did anyone actually see it? And what did you think, like? I just saw the aftermath. I just saw them covering because basically I heard on the broadcast over here they basically were showing it, which they're never supposed to do. And they went on, they went on record to say afterwards that yeah, that's not something that we do. That we did our best to to kind of mitigate for what the what the feed was giving us basically, but. Yeah, all I saw was the towels covering afterwards. That's that's all I saw. But I heard it was horrible, that like, really. Yeah, I saw it. Um, I went to go watch the replay. I was trying to figure out what I was talking about, and I wish I didn't see that. Let's just put it at that. Like, I just wish I didn't see it. So, yeah, I'm glad he's doing better. They said that he's conscious in the hospital and he's doing better. But mm. it's one of those things when you watch, you're just like, damn. You know, it's like when you watch the, um, that guy from the Mar Hamlin. It's like those sort of things when you watch mm. and you're just like, Jesus Christ, like, it reminds you of just like how brutal our sports really can be. And I'm just glad that he's doing well. That's really it. All right. In the 78th minute, uh, a little bit after this incident we just talked about, Willie Orban fouled Stuart Armstrong. Coach, I saw you tweet about that should be a pen. I didn't, I didn't see it. I was focused on Germany. What did I miss? Oh, that was, I was focused. I was talking about Germany as well when I saw that. <laughs> it was the, on, 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 by, on Bayer. Yeah, Bayer, when, when, when he literally bear hugged him. So yeah, that's what I was yeah. thinking of. Okay, yeah. okay. So we were yeah. talking about the same thing. Then I started yeah. hearing the chatter about the Scotland thing that I thought you were talking about. Anyway, sorry, people. Oh, actually, we I did, I did see out. that we as well. Sorry, see, I did. This, it was on Armstrong. This nigga a liar. It was. It was... Go on, coach. I'm listening. <laughs> so, no. So, from the angle I saw, I feel like it would have been a very harsh penalty because he's oh. gone through. He's clear. He's clear on goal. He's gone through, but the defender is not that far behind him. He's gone to shoot, and if, I feel like it's almost like a David Luiz thing, where like because of defenders running behind him, obviously his legs on to connect with his leg. Basically, that's what that's what I thought. That's what I felt like I saw from the angle that I saw. Basically, so it felt like it would have been harsh, kind of thing, because he's clear. He's clearly through on goal, kind of thing. It's like you know he does get clipped. So, um, but I'll just wait from one angle. But yeah, I don't really like Armstrong anyway. So there's that. <laughs> well, so what, what do you make of it is coach right on this i mean or? i didn't really see it i okay. did like get to take coach's word for it because listen that germany game was tantalizing me i did see though i did see the goal though yeah well hold on a second <laughs> i didn't ask you if you saw the goal you bitch ass nigga <laughs> 
Anyway, we got uh, no VAR involvement in that call either, from what I read. Um, 10 additional minutes because of the Vargas injury, and that's when the game actually started. Shit got nuts. Mm. First, we had an Adam Nagy header that, got, that missed narrowly. Then the goal scorer hit the bar. Then Grant mm. Hanley, who I also don't like, even though I like Stuart Armstrong, because that's coach's problem, had a nice strike that should have gone in. Gulashi saves that. Then from a Scotland corner, hungry counter on them. And I'm thinking that Callum McGregor, he chested the ball in the box. I don't know if you guys saw that shit. He chested the ball in the box instead of just waiting for it to drop. When he chested it, he gave the defender time to creep up on him. And from there, Sabosov, or whatever his name is, how do you say this? I'm going to try to pronounce it properly because he scored a great goal. So, yeah, I'm not doing this. (laughs) Hungarian names are hard, bros. I'm sorry. (laughs) Soba, I think, is how you say that. But it was game, set, match after that counter. at that stage of the game, Tosin, did you think Hungary were going to actually do it? or was Because Scot- it looked like Scotland were the ones that were going to win the game towards the end of the game. I didn't yeah. expect it from Hungary, but I will say it makes me, the hater in me, so happy to see pain from somebody else. Like, it, it, was, it made me so happy. I was like, wow, look at this. Like, you guys really <laughs> thought you were going to win, and now look, you're crying. This is, this is lovely. And this is just me being a neutral. Like, it could have happened to Nigeria. I'd be sad, but, you know, it's, it's good hate. This, it just is what it is. Somebody has to lose, and they did. So <laughs> this, could, this could have happened to Nigeria, he said. A little bit. <laughs> like we, like we, we, wouldn't even, we, wouldn't <laughs> we wouldn't even qualify to be there in the first place. <laughs> shit, man. Shit, shit is bad right now. Shit is bad. But this feels like it was all in vain, Coach, because Hungary now have three points in that group. Scotland would have had four points if they'd actually won. Yeah. Do, you, do you think Hungary just did some hater shit? Because it looks like they're both going home. Yeah, to be honest, I haven't looked at the rest of the groups, but I think four points is going to, ha- is going to be the, 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 um, the marker yeah. for, for the best third place. I don't think three points is going to be enough. Um, but I think, yeah, I, I don't know. I just, I just think it wasn't even hater shit. I just feel like they have to give themselves their the best chance basically but yeah, that's fair. Scotland are just I think they I think they're just really disappointing man like they're just stuck in this limbo of just being shit for, forever it feels like and I actually have a question for you because where do you really go now with Scotland especially with Steve mm-hmm. Clark Steve Clark is probably as good as going to get as it, as, it, as it gets for them in terms of a coach he, like he's not a bad coach at all I think he's, I actually really like him to be honest um where do they go from it, essentially, with him? <laughs> I, I think they just... I don't know that it's about Steve Clark anymore. They have to, because it's been mm. a while since Scotland actually made any real noise at the international level. Um, you know, mm. they, you know they, they occasionally have something like this happen, something dramatic that we care about, but they're almost always mm. on the receiving end of shit. So they just need to... No, I'll tell you when, I'll hold, tell you when they on, had they... something good last. <laughs> okay, tell us yeah. then. It was Euro 96 and 98 World Cup. That was it. And they've been rubbish ever since. That's a long time ago. That's a long time ago. Yeah. But I guess the point I wanted to make was that ultimately, you know, it it sounds corny and I've never actually been part of a process like this in my life, but I feel like they got to do what all the other countries have done. Start from the grassroots. Put money into your youth development. Put money into your infrastructure. Put money into your facilities and see where that gets you in another 10 years. That's all you can do, really. Because at the end of the day, they don't have enough quality. Their best player is probably John McGinnis. I know, yeah. I know coach loves that guy to death, but come on, <laughs> you know, you're no, not no, of course, him. of course, no, of course, yeah. of course, no, you're right. Yeah, absolutely right. It's, I loved, I love John McGinn in the context of he's never really going to be, be more than what he is right now kind of thing. Mm-hmm. And I, and I love that for him. He's just, he's just a, he's just a good player in it, but you're right. I think because I was thinking, I was thinking like really and truly, what do we even have? What do they even have coming up? A lot of their players. Legit, I don't mean it's a nice way. They they would be playing for England if they were good enough. You see what I'm saying? Like that's that's just that's the cold hard facts. You know what I mean? Like what the fuck is the Che Adams, bro? Like Che, oh, like che Adams did it. God. <laughs> so so yeah, man. Like that's fucked up. Che Adams, Che Adams is a Scotsman's version of a francophone. That's fucked up. Like they can do better than that. You yeah, know? you're gonna need some Nigerians to pull up, fuck with some white woman. It can happen. Just. Yeah. Just the Nigerian immigration laws or something. <laughs> we will the, be dead. Nigerians we'll be dead. are in Ireland now. That we're is true, actually. They are. We're, we're everywhere. We're global. Nigeria is global. 
All right, guys, enough about this game, which wasn't all that great, if we're being honest. It was just very Valorant, which is hilarious. The star fixture of the day was Germany, the hosts, won. Switzerland won. Uh, very bright start by the Germans. But uh, mm. Tosin, what'd you make of uh, Nagelsmann not removing any of his yellow card guys? Uh, I think Jonathan Tha, Robert Andrich were both going to get suspended if he got a yellow in this game. And he didn't even bother to remove them. He skates boards to practice. <laughs> okay. Okay. I mean, yeah. Well, I don't know what else you're going to say about that. Like, I mean, this is this is who he is. Like, it wasn't smart. Now Jonathan Tarr is out. And, you know, you could have just pushed Lotterbeck, who did very well in the Champions League final. He was a good enough person for you to do that. But um, I don't know who they're going to play next. So they might regret it. But I will say that wasn't smart. That's that's the one thing I'll say. <laughs> uh, one of those yellow card out. Potential suspensions. Andrich scored mm. a goal that got disallowed. How do we feel about that? I mean, the goal itself, I mean, I know, Coach, you have problems with the goalkeeping on that. I, mm. I still haven't decided how I feel about it, but what did you make of the goal itself being disallowed, Coach? Um, in real time, I was like, the fuck, what the fuck happened kind of thing. And then we start going into slow motion and we're almost like, uh, what happened? Let's look at it what, in real time, kind of thing. Like, do you know what I mean? It's, and we get into that debate. A foul's a foul. Don't get me wrong. A foul's a foul, kind of thing. But it almost feels like <sighs> if we're given a foul for that, and it didn't really affect play, and it's it's not like he's, it's not like he was, um, it was an off the ball incident somewhere, and it could have potentially stopped that player from getting out to the ball or whatever. It was no very much a circumstantial balls coming. They've both, one tried to defend it, the other one tried to attack it. Didn't work out, but the ball's come out now. And someone's shot. I'm not being funny. Like, and they've shot from distance as well. If they had shot within that six yard box, whatever, cool, I can maybe understand that kind of thing. But they've shot from all the way from flipping um, Austria. Do you know what I mean? And, you know, they, <laughs> the ball's gone in and the goalkeeper's let in. So it's like, I would give it. Yeah, I would give it personally, I think. Based on based on what the reason I'm giving it, I would give it. I know it's not the letter of the law, but I think it would be fair to give it for me. Yeah, I was just frustrated by it. I mean, like, toast and go on. Um, I have to double back onto uh, the Steve Clark thing because I just saw something funny, and I'm sorry, I had to go back. They asked Steve Clark wasn't the penalty. He said it's because he's Argentinian, and, you know, that's... Falkland Ward, yeah, I'm going to leave that alone. But yeah, he basically said the reason why they give a penalty is because of he's Argentine. So, wait, wait, who's Argentine? The referee. <laughs> yeah, and that's what Steve Clark said. Oh, like, good. Fair yeah. enough. They got, wait, they got Argentinians referee in the, in the Euros. And they got, uh, the, and they also got Itali uh, Euros in, uh, in Copa America. America. Fair yeah. enough. Yeah, they're doing a foreign exchange student program. Fair enough. So okay. I, I wonder what he means by he's Argentinian. Is that that? They just play really violent down there, which is true, or that Argentina don't like Scotland. Wow. Uh, I mean, I, I I mean don't Scotland know. don't. I mean, Argentina don't care about no fucking Scotland. Like, fuck Ooh. out of here, man. Like, I don't know. All right, back to Jeremy, though. Uh, Dan Ndoye. I've never actually mm. seen him score a goal or assist a goal, even though I watched mm. a little bit of Bologna this year. He's a good player, but the end product, mm. I mean, he just. To me, Tosin, watching him this season, I was like, that's a light skinned Jorvino. I know that player when I see him. Um, but amazing finish today. Amazing finish today, Tosin. Yeah, I mean, listen, sometimes you just got to grow up. And he grew up in front of our eyes. So good for him. He's what, like two or three goals with Bologna this season, which is not a good return. But, you know, he did what he had to do today. It was a very good finish. And I did say he was a player to watch. And I'm glad that he said that. Mm -hmm. So I'm glad he finished. So good for him. So, um, Coach, your boy, Jamal Musiala. Brave dribbler. Lost the ball in a dangerous area, led to a goal. What do you have to say about your fellow Muslim? We're, do, we're doing this. We're doing this micro, microwave consumption of football. Like, they play so many matches. The chances of this, the top, the chances of this happening, like once every every so often, is incredibly high. So it just happened to be in a, in a. It just happened to be in a European, in a high profile European um, international match. You know what I mean? So. Is what is what I will say though is they done really well to to I think suffocate him and works even though they had little moments here here and there that goal came about from the fact I think they realized they could they could match Germany physically and press them um, and yeah he's lost the he's lost the ball but there was about two or three passes after that 
you know, Germany got back into position relatively decently, but sometimes a good goal is just a good goal. Um, but yeah, I, I'm I'm not going to crucify him for it. I think he'll learn from it, but at the same time, that with that type of play, you don't really want to castrate them, basically. You're, you're not going to tell them, oh, don't do that again, kind of thing. You know, you want to tell them, no, do that again. Just be, just be fucking quicker next time. That's it. <laughs> so, well, coaches yeah. answer sound like a lobbyist in DC. I love it. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> like, like this nigga did the context. He put in like three yeah. caveats, and it was like, all right. Then also, you don't really want to tell him not to do that anymore. God damn, you are like when you have kids, bro. They're gonna be so spoiled. Oh my god, you can't discipline oh, your listen. Yeah. Yeah, D, no, you yeah, gotta, you're right. You're right. I'm a soldier, D, man. Dean, you got to check from Big Playmaker. That's what you got to check from. <laughs> <laughs> no, for real. Like, I actually think about it now. I'm going to be finished. I can't, I won't be able to say no. Like, yeah, I don't want to say no that, to my cat. Oh, oh, that, oh, that, <laughs> all that fucking uh, Rui Costa Benfica money. We know where it's going now. We know where it's going. This nigga got the Portuguese jersey on even. Oh, my God. What a criminal. What Do a you know what? I actually regret wearing it now. Like, it's very <laughs> obvious. I've been, I've been paid. So, so that's so, why so, you yeah, like yeah. y'all Felix. <laughs> no, that Big has nothing to do with the reason why I like y'all Felix. Be quiet, y'all. <laughs> um, yeah, but uh, Jeremy, man, they were actually better before they conceded the goal, which was kind of disappointing. And this was, I think this was what people were fearing from them before those two friendlies before the tournament where they beat France and somebody else I can't remember right now. But... The prior two games were better. This wasn't very good. This was, um, um, I, I kind of got to go back to coach here, Tosin. Don't, no vex with me. But it feels like Granit Xhaka has taken another victim. Am I correct here? <sighs> here we go. Man, I've been, I've been waiting because they've been talking crazy on my boy. Like, listen, he's not anybody's mate. Put up. <laughs> You know, and maybe it's because of Arsenal's, Arsenal's, you know, misfortune of not qualifying for the Champions League, but put up any top midfielder that he's come up against the last seven, eight years, especially if he's played against them more than once and he's left them with more than a bloody nose. Mm. I'm, like, Jack has, has taken bodies, guys. In his first season, I won't forget, FA Cup semi-final, Fernandinho, he took his lunch. All the way up into extra time, he took his lunch, right? He, he has this knack of playing better against better mm-hmm. midfielders. It's when he's coming up against those weirdos that, you know, probably we don't even, we can't even remember their names. That's when he tends to have his, his bad games. But the better the opponent, he seems to play even better. And I think Martin Keown was saying it on, on the broadcast, but I was noticing he took a very measured approach today. He, he, he wanted the ball, demanded the ball, but he wasn't trying to dominate the ball. He was plugging gaps like a hooligan. There was no space for Gundogan to run into. I don't know if you guys know this, but there was no space. And guess who was there? Ah, a big Albanian. <laughs> like, for real. Though. So he, he, he was very much a... He, he played a slightly different role, but when he did get on the ball, he hurt them. And he had that amazing shot that Neuer saved as well. But mm. I really think he had the best... I think he was probably the best midfielder on the pitch today, which is now it's not an alien thing to say. He normally comes out of these games looking excellent. <laughs> so Very well said, coach. Uh, Tosin, these men, this Switzerland man, this would have been a famous victory for them. They didn't get it in the end because uh, they eventually considered an equalizer. We'll talk about in a second here. But they probably deserve to win this game, right? Yeah, I mean, I think that second goal, um, if that guy was a little bit sharper, um, that would have been a, that would have been a um, goal. But that was a good finish, nonetheless. The, the disallowed but, offside goal? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. He just needed to hold that line a little bit tighter, you know. Yeah, yeah, but it was it was it was um it was a it was a good display from them. Um, back to Granit Xhaka. I want to add something. The other day, I saw a picture of him next to his brother. He's definitely looks like the eldest brother. Um, God blessed him with all the genes instead of his brother. So well, his brother's shorter than him, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. I don't even think it's a God thing per se. I think when you're both young as children and your parents give you the house key, that just it's like putting on it's like putting on ankle weights. You know, it, it, it's extra resistance. So over time, you get bigger, you get stronger. Yeah. You know, I am also a man that was raised with house keys in my pockets, you know, and I am I'm six foot five, you know. I don't know if you people know that I'm six foot five. Eh? Anyway, <laughs> yeah, uh, you mentioned the, the Jaka shot, you know, that was one of, I, I can remember at least one other really good Neuer save in this game. And uh, mm. yeah, it was, it was disappointing from Germany. They really only created half chances. I feel like Havertz missed a couple headers. Uh, David Raum came on. I, I like him. Yeah. I, I don't 
I like that they found Medushtat and he's the starter, but I always felt like David Round was pretty good too. And he, he whips in a good cross. And the one cross that actually made it to his destination, full group finished. Um, Coach, uh, the way this whole goal scoring thing is going with own goal at the top and Lukaku VAR after that, full Krug might actually fulfill your expectations and be the top scorer in this tournament. Well, I'll be honest with you. I think he's the perfect profile for this tournament to come off the bench. Like, not everybody has a full group, full group to come off the bench, which is, it works in Germany's favour. But you look at the composition of Germany's attack and they've pretty much got a mix of pretty much everything that you need. They've got a pacey winger they're not using right now in Sane, but then they've got two creative outlets who can dribble and carry, who can carry, so who can move the ball over great distance. But then they've also got someone who can move without the ball over great distance in both Gundogan and Havertz, right? And then on top of that, you now have a certified, not boogeyman or pedophile, sorry, <laughs> <but> a, certified, <laughs> a certified target man, right? A certified target man who can come in last 15 minutes. He's stronger than everybody else. He's going to have that half yard as well. You can just lump it up to him. Germany have so many solutions attacking wise. It's, I suppose it's probably... The Achilles still is probably going to be defensively, um, but yeah, Fulkrug is is going to is going to be huge for them in, in the round in the knockout rounds for sure because of because of that. They, Germany are not going to get blown away by anyone. They're going to probably be in a few more tight games, and he could be the one to break the game late on. He's proven it enough times. So, well, well, before we move on, is there an argument that he should just start? No, no, and and I, I put it like this: Germany, this German team are incredibly technical. Right, and all of the good work that they do, kind of thing, relies on having a striker who can do all of that with them as well. And while I have, while I do like full crook over the ninety minutes, he's going to be easily, he's going to be much easier to to snuff out than if it's the last fifteen minutes and it's panic stations for centre backs and everybody else now because he will fight. It's easy, the game is easier for him to affect rather than from a different game state from the beginning. Mm. Tosin, big playmaker, huh? Yeah, that lobby. <laughs> they hit hard, man. He picked the he yes. picked the false nine over the nine. Disgusting. <laughs> anyway, yeah. um, Tosin, uh, one of the guys that's supposed to be a really good tool for Nagel's man in this tournament is Leroy Sane. You've seen him a couple times in this tournament. What what are you what are you thinking of what you see? <laughs> all right. So first of all, someone I tweeted today that this is exactly why they got Mike Walise because again, if you've watched enough Bayern this season, you know that you know. No offense to Sane, great player pre AC. I think that injury really has taken its toll. Like yes, he did well against Arsenal, but he hasn't been the Leroy Sane that we know. What, 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 right? what are you saying? What me for? I'm just saying, like I'm just saying, you know, I'm just saying, like you know, he he did he did his thing. You guys know he did his thing. What I'm saying is like over the season, right? He hasn't been the Leroy Sane that we all know. And, you know, unfortunately, injuries take a toll on people. And I've seen enough Bayern Munich to know that, like, there's a reason why they want to get rid of him and Nabry. Like, it's just time to upgrade. And that's why Nabry didn't get called up. And that's why Leroy is looking like Leroy. I mean, I feel bad. You know, he, you know there is still a player in him, but I just feel that injuries really, really messed him up, man. And it's it, you see, like, in the cameos over and over again that he don't got that pace no more. And I think that perm is also holding him back, too, you know. So, sugar-free. <laughs> Might have to go get braids or something like the rest of the Netherlands. So. Oh man, uh, are there any insights, uh, coach, that we can take from this Germany performance? Uh, are we going to see more games like this or more games like the first two for the rest of the tournament? Um, it depends on who they get, but I suspect that because they have such a an easy system to 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 play, actually, from front to back, where they have the correct profiles in defense, in midfield, in attack, kind of thing. I don't feel like teams are going are going to find it easy against them because football is all about maximizing your strengths first and foremost. And I feel like Germany are probably the one team across the competition. Spain, Spain as well, probably that have found a way to maximize their strengths more often than anybody else, kind of thing. If you're doing that with the likes of uh, Musiala, Gundogan, Havertz, and um, and Wurtz, kind yeah. of thing. There's very few other teams that can match that sort of firepower. So they might be coming across teams again, maybe like an uh maybe like an England or whatever. England are gonna surrender the ball to them, which is what Germany want. You know what I mean? And that could play into what Germany exact that could play into 
um, more to Germany's hands than England's hands kind of thing. So they might become against teams more and more that are just going to sit off them because they can't really match them because they haven't got their own... Um, they haven't figured out, you know, how to get the best out of their own players kind of thing. So I'm, I'm curious. I'm really curious to see how... If Nagelsmann is gonna, you know, fight his his inner Green Goblin mask to, to to change something, but but I hope he doesn't. I hope he just kind of just keeps things relatively the same because there's enough there. So, fellas, I have a question for both of you. What do you think about David Ryan when he came on the left back? Um, I think Dean touched on it. To be fair, like there's no reason why he can't. He shouldn't be starting over. Um, me- Middle I'm just calling Milstone that because that because it sounds like that, right? That's what I want to call him. Yeah, but again. The first, uh, um, Milton has done nothing wrong to, to be dropped. So, yeah. yeah that's fair. And I, and I think Rom actually, from a profile standpoint, actually kind of seems like more of a wing back than a full back, really. So mm. maybe that's why he's on the bench. So, you know. In any event. Um, I mean, he does play left mid for Leipzig, so that makes sense. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> there you go. So, you know. <laughs> so maybe Nagelsmann pays more attention to the team than we do. <laughs> Oh man. All right, fellas. This has been fun. Only two games to talk about, but we did stretch it out for the people. Um actually I'm gonna pause that. <laughs> Since it's been too media on this part. <laughs> I, was to to here, say, I, was, I was waiting for you to say pause. I was like, hey, yo, that's crazy. But listen, <laughs> it is Pride Month. So Um, yeah. I'll be honest, just guys just meet up this week. We need meet up with your friends, meet up with your family. Meet up with your work colleagues. Just meet, just meet, 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 meet. And while you're meeting with them, and you're sitting in meetings, and you, and you, and you go to the, to the athletics meet, share this podcast with them. <laughs> and like and subscribe. Meet up. And use protection, please. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone from us, we're out. Take it easy. Meet. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Take a shower.